I don't know how I missed this one. Hello, everybody. Welcome to a beautiful sunny day here in Southern Michigan, my hometown store, where I'm taking a look at some updated footage on the, uh, the, the Keystone Cougar 320 RDS. This is a floor plan that came out last year, and I saw the very original prototype, and I don't know how I missed it, but this uh, this one apparently came in here with the, the fully loaded uh, Midnight Edition paint package and just all the beautiful updates here, and I'm really excited to get to showcase this one for you. So it's kind of a modern classic, and apologies for the, uh, the road noise. We are right up next to the highway right here showing off this one apparently, but uh, instead of the same theater seat and booth dinette and, and, and hide-a-bed that everybody makes. They rearrange things a little bit and it's kind of a different twist on the sort of quote rear den concept where you've got a huge flat screen on a televator, uh, I haven't said the word flat screen in a while, smart TV on the rear wall that powers up and down. You have incredible window coverage on this one because the windows, uh, I mean, they wrap about 270 degrees around this thing and it gives you awesome living space, but you still have the benefits of a theater seat, you still have the benefits of a hide bed but you also have the benefits of just like a daytime napping lounge or it gives my Uncle Gary a place to crash when Aunt Rita done kicked him out again because, you know, he keeps doing that, that well never mind anyway um <laughs> we've got auto leveling uh and a lock brakes are now standard on this um and obviously we're looking at the midnight edition that gives you a choice between the gr phantom gray paint that we're looking at or the whatever it's called jet black paint and i'll give you a sample of those as we go um but it includes a bunch of other things beyond just the paint this is I, for a, uh, a a larger over 35 foot couples ca uh, camp and fifth wheel, this is one of my personal favorites because I like how the kitchen's a real kitchen. I like how the living room's really dedicated and functional. And if you like how we show you the good with the bad through this video, hit that subscribe button and uh, let us know as we go what you like and what you don't and how you would change it given the opportunity. And before we begin, story time. It has nothing to do with the price of tea in China. When I was trying to start this video, one of our um, fine individuals in the local community driving a vehicle that sounded like it was missing a catalytic converter um, screamed past me and also screamed at me uh, a variety of interesting obscenities. Effectively, I was called everything but white. And I, it happens when you're driving, when you're, you're parked by the road like this, sometimes people they, they need that in their lives. So, okay, that's fine. I can be, uh, I can shoulder that for you. That's okay. But this guy kept driving back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, and he kept doing it. And I thought this was very interesting. So I called the local authorities who happened to catch the guy in the act. And he's currently over at the gas station getting a ticket. And, uh, you know, that's, that's a fun way to start the day. This is all true. I know my stories are always nonsense. They're, this is not some big, long setup to a punchline. It's just one minute of your life you're never going to get back. Maybe a minute and a half. Meanwhile, though, this morning, one of our viewers named Travis said he really, really appreciated the work that we did here and wanted to know if he could make a donation to a charity on uh, our behalf. Well, Travis, in his extreme generosity... Dropped a hundred bucks to St. Jude's Children's Hospital, and I thought that was amazing. And I and I talked to Travis about the dichotomy of human beings, and uh, you know how he was doing such a kindness, and how this other guy, well, was not. And uh, Travis said, "I tell you what, he gives you a hard time again. I'll be your bodyguard." And God is my witness. I responded to Travis, "If you'll be my bodyguard, I could be your long lost pal. I could call you Travis, and Travis, when you call me." You can call me Al. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my morning. Travis just responded. Travis says, deal, because you got a friend in me. <laughs> I have the absolute greatest audience ever. So we are two minutes into this interior tour, and I've shown you a lot, not told you a lot. This floor plan is one that I really like. Thank you, by the way, for hanging out during story time. Follow me for more recipes. Again, most RVs, you, like normally this would be a booth dinette, uh, as I recall. But when I looked at the very first prototype of this, it was really too tight of a, uh, a slide out. So they widened it a little bit. And that's why I pulled a couple of the chairs in and a couple of chairs out. So you can actually see like normal adult humans can actually fit there. And the campsite viewing coverage on this. It's amazing. And these all have blackout roller shades that we're going to get to see. 
I mean, the, the viewing coverage anywhere is great. Like, if, if you're park camping, if you're not park camping, it doesn't matter. You're going to have a really good, awesome view of where you're at. And that is uh, a no-knee knocker, Dinette. It's got, like, a metallic bracket so it doesn't smash your legs, you know. You can see how they went to a carpetless floor flush slide. Sometimes people freak out when they see a little lump in the flap over here. They see the flooring's obviously busted. That's not the slide floor. That's the linoleum flap that hangs off of the slide floor. That one just apparently is a little wonky. I don't know. We can probably stretch that out. I will. I, I always try to be fair. Like I love the fact that they included some outlets in here, but the um, the light switch. I'm wondering if. Well, maybe, maybe not. The 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 lambrequin here may actually prevent you from. Um, smashing that now that is actually a dimmer light switch and you saw how this is a power televator so if you want maximized windows and airflow you got it if you want tv time you got it if you want none of that but you want privacy you also have that now up top here you've got the uh the ceiling fan helping promote some airflow in this and it also has a big xl kitchen fan and then when we get all the way up top here, you see the, uh, the oh, I forgot the name of it, but Keystone's, like every manufacturer has uh, some sort of story how they have the best air conditioner, right? Well, Keystone's Blade Pure, that's what it's called. Their Blade Pure air system uh, actually has residential air filters on it. Now, normally this RV would only have a 15,000 BTU main living room air conditioner and be prepped for second air. I cannot personally imagine ever buying something like this without the second air, considering how big it is. Um, but the midnight edition that we're looking at with the paint package forces the second air conditioner. So uh, kind of keep that little detail in your memory banks there. Now they do not offer interior decor swaptions. Uh, they about every two years tend to update their decor though. but. This is really, I think, kind of the secret in the sauce in the way that this sofa can flip, flop, you know, roll it over, flip it, and reverse it Missy Elliott style. So take a look at this. First of all, you do have dual wall-hugging theater recliners and even a little bit of bonus chunk of storage space over in there in that corner. You got to reef some cushions out of the way, but you're not going to put your silverware down there, not the everyday use stuff. And when this opens into a hide -a bed it opens into a m -m -m mega bed I mean, that thing is huge because it lines right up with some of the other cushions so if you have several uh adult size guests you could fit in here i uh given that note <clears throat> i could see this floor plan potentially working well for the uh well the pineapple pals if you're picking up what i'm putting down uh on a flamingo friday <laughs> but you know the tv is there when you want it gone when you don't the prototype that i first saw this it had the normal cougar tv which is not small but it felt small on a giant rear wall like this. So this model actually has a larger TV as compared to most Cougar, uh, even fifth wheel uh, models here. These are all blackout roller shades to really blot the sun out like King Leonidas. And of course the windows are also UV tinted, which is kind of cool. And uh, again, the campsite viewing coverage on this is pretty stellar. But what's really, really interesting, and we'll get to see this more in road mode, is historically, anybody who built this floor plan, they extended the slide all the way up to the door. Now that meant that on a rainy day, coming in and out, even with the awnings open, you get spritzed in the face. We'll just, I'll, I'll expand on that when we get outside. But the way that they did this, look at the wooden platform under the sofa. And if you look really, really closely, what's actually happening here is most of the time when you have a, uh, a sofa that moves in a slide, like an L-shaped, like residential simulated style sofa like this, you usually have to take these seats off and store them. You don't have to do that. There's not exactly wheels under that platform. There's actually wheels on the floor, and then the platform glides above it. So you never have to take any of this apart. And because the runners are not on the floor, you're not running the risk of accidentally... Uh, like catching a stone and grinding into your linoleum. It's a simple change that is brilliant for avoiding long-term uh, hazards. I think it's absolutely awesome. And that is a legit adult-length napping couch. I'm pretty sure Shaquille O'Neal could probably lay down across that sucker. And uh, something I always felt bad about for Shaq is... The B-52s really robbed him of being able to uh, sign his letters, Love Shaq, you know? I just always felt bad for that guy. You know, he really had it hard, obviously. <laughs> 
Talk about a guy who's done a lot for a lot of people, though. Uh, sorry, I'm on story time again. Anyway, taking a look at some more details here. Again, blackout roller shades all the way through, showing you through all the storage that we have in this kitchen right here. You've got um, multiple inverter prepped outlets through this RV, but the Midnight Edition automatically includes a 2000 watt inverter. So any of the outlets that you're seeing that have a yellow sticker that say inverter prepped, they are actually being live powered uh, or could be live powered from the, uh, the battery package that is included with the Midnight Edition. We're gonna talk again more about all that outside because a lot of the Midnight package is actually stuff that happens outdoors. Um, these peninsula style wraparound kitchens are very classic and they give you the most countertop prep space. I think that you can really possibly get in something this size. Um, and they also give you a lot of storage. It's really, really cool how all this storage works. Part of the kitchen actually telescopes over the other part of the kitchen, which is why you have that countertop level exchange in case you were curious. Now below the sink, there's huge space for waste baskets, all kinds of goodness going on there. Uh, you may have noticed how these are solid surface countertops as well. And just in case you missed it, I'm going to back up just a little bit. It's interesting because the um, the whole sofa and kitchen super slide to our right-hand side, it does have to slide under that cabinet because this portion of the cabinet's fixed. Everything slides over it. It creates the perfect toe kick. You can actually belly right up to that bar and not have to worry about anything. And you can see where they had the opportunity because you have that little wall partition to help define kitchen from living room. They put some power outlets there. Perfect little appliance station, if you ask me. Larger, uh, like 22 inch oven instead of the 16 inch Easy Bake, residential sized microwave. And you can see a little bit of my bald reflection in the 16 cubic foot uh, 12 volt DC compressor fridge. And I don't know if you caught it, but up top here, you do have one of those rain uh, sensing XL vent fans to really get uh, you know the air moving. Now I like to share good with bad. Um, you might notice my vest and my hoodie are just sort of hanging on some handrails on the fire extinguisher over here. It kind of exposed the fact, but I didn't realize that when I first walk in, it doesn't have any sort of coat closet by the door, which I think would be really, really handy. But this one doesn't offer it. Now something uh, that is changing in Cougars, this one today has the in-command system. Cougars actually going away from in-command. They're not changing to a different smart system. They're changing over to just physical switch panels. And uh, I asked them why, because that's, I figure the first question I'm gonna get from a lot of people is why are they doing that? Are they going cheap? Because a switch panel is less money, certainly. And that's not that it's a bad thing to have an RV cost less money. But I talked to Cougar about it. And really what they're trying to do is just simplify the equation. There are a lot of people who don't know how to run those smart systems and they think something's wrong that actually isn't wrong. And Cougar just wants to kind of eliminate that opportunity. It reminds me a lot of what Alliance is doing. Not to mention, God forbid you do have a problem. It is a lot easier to uh, change an individual physical switch uh, versus like deal with a, uh, a smart command panel. So that's what's happening there. You can see great space around that porcelain foot flush stool right there. You can also see how you do have a seat in the shower so Uncle Gary can shave his shins. And I personally prefer a towel bar instead of a towel hook. I feel like it just gets drier faster. You know what I mean? Oh, I just noticed something. We'll get there in a second. Take a look at the, the storage cubby up here for your linens. You might notice that actually doubles as the top of the pantry. So you're going to want to kind of plan accordingly. But I just noticed they added a ceiling light in the shower. So if you're taking a shower at night, you can see what you're doing better. Not to mention the fact if you take a look at my headroom in here, uh, I certainly don't feel like condensed in here. I, I I like what they're doing. And the trend of going with a clear shower door, um, I think Cougar really kind of sparked that off in the, uh, the more modern uh, era of things here. Now, viewers in the comment section, leave a little comment, tell everybody what this is. Cause if you don't, I'm gonna tell people it's an FBI listening device. <laughs> cool thing though, is they do have just a simple light switch in the bedroom, whether it's an in-command model or when they make the changeover. Now, uh, I'll get you a better look in a minute at our TV hookups over here on the right, but you see that yellow sticker. Again, if you get a Cougar with the inverter or add an inverter to any Cougar, those could be live powered uh, off a of battery. Now you've got a 70 by 80 RV king bed over here. There is the opportunity to get a 60 by 80 true queen if you that uh, you know that's your preference. And when we get wrapped around the corner here, they've got the, I'm not gonna call that CPAP shelves. My understanding is you shouldn't have a CPAP machine above your head. 
but you could use it as a phone charger and they do have some outlets here. Now, if you go with the queen bed, you're going to gain five extra inches um, beside the mattress on either side of the bed. So if you're, uh, you know, a breathing machine user, something like that, or you don't want a power cord dangling above your head, you could always go that route. Now, if you're looking at a cougar in stock with the king bed, you could always replace that mattress with a true queen. All you really have to do is shave down that wood a little bit because you see how the wood hangs over the bed base? The base is queen sized. The decking is king sized. So it's really not hard to shave that down. Now I've talked to some folks who talked to some dealerships who said, well, the dealer said they couldn't do that. Well, that's because they're lazy and or wrong. I don't, I don't know. You don't see outlets over here. They're actually up in that front closet. So that stand sort of acts like a little bit of a night side stand. I'm not saying it's ideal. I'm saying it's sort of, sort of like that. Anyway, working our way uh, around the corner over here. Um, I think it was last year. Cougar fifth wheels went through a profile change. And what it allowed them to do is gain more bedroom storage than they had before. So let's actually start right down here. And you can see, you know, you got the dresser drawers, no, no surprise there. But instead of combo washer dryer prep, we are now stackable washer dryer prep, which is something that these simply did not have previously. Um, uh, additionally, you do have full storage below that bed and easy access thanks to those gas struts that you have down there. So uh, you know, being able to get to all the stuff in here or use it in different ways, like Cougar is a brand, they used to be a, uh, you know, like the lower budget basic fifth wheel and they've really grown into something that frankly, a lot of retirees are starting to look at. Now in road mode, I have to tell you, Keystone doesn't actually test uh, for, for a person to occupy their slide when it's closed. So I can't guarantee anything. I can tell you that there's a caster under there to help support your weight at the end of the bed. I, I can't promise this. I'm estimating that as long as you're not trying to aggressively fold laundry in that bed when it's closed, you'd probably be okay for an overnight sleepover. Again, I can't make a promise the factory doesn't make, but you might want to keep that in mind. Now, we are in the road mode segment here, but I, sometimes I sit there and I spend 10 minutes describing something when I could just show you, basically. So I wanted to close this rack and pinion slide to demonstrate how the entire sofa actually slides uh, on top of those rollers right there. It's a little bit different. I think it's really, really smart how they're doing this. And it doesn't take too awful long. That's about all the longer it takes. Now, obviously with that closed, we are cut off from getting uh, back to the rest of the living room. And there is obviously an, another slide that closes. I think you get that. But what I want to point out is you saw that we can access the bedroom in transit. And the way that this is laid out, you can access the full refrigerator without ever touching a slide button. So this one has the holy trinity of travel access points. Um, you know, the nap crap and snacktastic access. Although again, if you're going to try to sleep on that bed, I can't promise you anything. I'm just guessing you'd be okay. Now, once again, we are right next to the road here, so it's very possible we're going to get some traffic noise. In my little southern Michigan community, there are quite a few missing catalytic converters causing some uh, rather throaty-sounding exhausts. Uh, anyway, if we're going to talk towing on this, you just took another look at the weights and the measures there. Um, I'm not sure that one ton's the wrong idea. I think that there's, uh, I have to double check some hitch weight factors, but there's potential that some properly equipped three quarter tons could do the trick, but I don't know that a single rear wheel one ton would necessarily be a bad choice. I think, I don't know that you gotta go like get a diesel heavy duty. I think a good one ton gasser would actually be a really nice fit for this. Now for towing and going, You've got the uh, road armor shock dampening pin box here, but you also have uh, a matching like set of suspension shackles. And it's the exact same equipment that uh, my dad's very last Montana fifth wheel had. And he constantly talked about how that was the, uh, the best towing, best riding and handling fifth wheel he ever personally owned. Now they put their spare tire up in the front cavity here, which some people don't like because if uh, you do need to change the tire, it can be hard to get in here because sometimes that baggage door won't uh, always clear everybody's tailgate. So that's something you're going to want to keep in mind. And what some of my viewers tip me off to that. So I sure appreciate it. You know, if little tips like that are handy, you know, follow along, subscribe to the channel. Never know what you might learn next. Now with the midnight edition, we are picking up uh, 200 amp hours of lithium batteries that you can't really see because they're nicely enclosed in that handy dandy battery box there. Normally this would have no batteries from the factory. That's something that we would help you uh, work out. But on the midnights, again, it'll be factory standard. You've also got 
the 440 watt solar package, which gives you a 2000 watt inverter up there uh, that runs to like seven or eight different outlets and a one, uh, pardon me, nope, not 100 amp, 30 amp uh, charge controller uh, by Victron and it's an MPPT variety. And if you don't know what that means, basically it's the more efficient. There's PWM controllers and MPPT controllers. MPPT costs more, but you get more of the, the sun converted into lightning stored in those lithium batteries up there. Um, the, uh, the bedroom slide, that is shallow. That is a cable slide, whereas our, our lower decks uh, are rack and pinion. So, you know, your big heavy, like, kitchen slide is a uh, heavier duty, reliable rack and pinion job. And let me get you right up here. Uh, up close and personal to what one of these paint packages uh, looks like. You can see that it's not a, uh, a a pure like like totally smooth skin on it. It kind of looks like some people described it as orange peel, but I don't know, man. From a distance, I, I think it looks just fine. Now they're using the larger 60,000 BTU uh, hot water here, so if you're doing hot water in the kitchen and the shower, the person in the shower doesn't have to take a cold uh, shower anytime soon, and you do have a single-headed sewer outlet, so you don't have to do the poop, scoop, boogie, walk of shame between a couple different sort of things. Now, uh, over here, you do have uh, Rainier tires, and uh, those, of course, you know, being a uh, belted radio, like, I mean, what isn't at this point, which is good. Uh, underbelly's enclosed. It is forced air heated. You do have holding tank heaters standard on this as well, as well as a radiant barrier layering going through the belly, up the nose, and across the roof, which is what a lot of brands do nowadays. And they love to slap these stickers on the side of the RV that say four seasons, and you got a picture of some grass, a leaf, a sunshine, a raindrop, whatever. Um, I don't like the phrase four seasons camping. I think it's misleading, but these are zero to 110 degree rated in their standard format. I don't know that they've hard weather tested the midnight edition because let's be real with a very dark black and or gray exterior. They're going to pick up more heat from the sun for sure. Now jumping over to the other side of the pass through that is our in command brain panel right here. Let me actually get that open for you. Let me perform some, I don't know, brain surgery on this thing. If I was smart and better at my job, I would have had this open already, but you know, I could also just edit all this out of my video, but that ex wouldn't exactly be on brand for me. Oh my Lord, is this the longest thread screw ever? Okay, 45 seconds later, that's what the brains of the camper look like. Not a lot of gray matter, a lot of rainbow matter because they do color code every one of their wires. And what you don't see are the little automotive blade fuses. These are big like bus fuses, you know? These things are bus relays, technically. They handle a lot more juice. And if you want to like open or close a slide motor or awning motor, you can actually do that right from out here by selecting it, then hitting your uh, on off selector, which with ever, whichever one you like. By the way, I don't think I mentioned this. I mentioned that was a cable slide in the upper deck. That is the uh, Norco exact slide system, not the um, Ecu slide system, just in case uh, someone's curious. On a straight in and out uh, situation like that, that's pretty common. Now, again, we're looking at the Midnight Edition, but that's uh, optional, and it includes this full paint. You have a choice between uh, what we're looking at right here, which is called Phantom Gray, there's also the more uh, e even darker black exterior, although side by, when you see them side by side, you can tell them apart, but like on just AB footage like this, it's actually kind of tough. Or of course you have the standard exterior. Nothing says you have to get this floor plan in the midnight package. Like if you live down South and you're worried about the sun cooking you out of this thing, don't get the midnight edition. You can still get things like the second air conditioner, but the second air is actually forced factory standard when you do go to the darker exterior. Uh, when, when you take a look at this, because it's only a small slide on the campsite of the RV, they don't really have the opportunity to include a second awning, but in a way I'm not mad about it because the one awning that we do get is actually really nicely sized and the door's right in the middle of it. And if you've never had an RV, something you don't realize is that when it is raining, if the awning arm is right next to the door, you're gonna get kind of spritzed in the face quite a bit. Now you don't really have that problem. So you can actually still kind of enjoy your patio space a little bit more on a light rainy day. If it's heavy rainy, you should obviously put her away. Now down here, of course, we talked about the radial tires. Um, the, uh, they are TPMS prepped. It's basically a plug and play system. You see the red wheel hubs? That's a dead giveaway that this has the Lippert ABS system and their anti-lock brake system. I've done personal test drives in it. It works, it works so well. The funny thing is when it's working, 
you don't really realize that it's working. Just, you know, the trailer follows you when you need to make some emergency turning maneuvers. But that's not always the case if you don't have the extra safety systems. And it is now ABS is standard on every single Cougar, even the sport models. They decided to prioritize, uh, you know, towing safety, which I totally, totally respect. They are backup camera ready. I think they're using the Furion mount, but you could put about anything back there. What's funny is when you pop that mount off, there's just a wire that you basically splice into, so you can use about any camera you want. Um, the uh, On the back here, a couple interesting notes. They do give you a stinky, slinky sewer tube, and it does. it's the full width of the body, so it's, the, it's a nicer, longer one. You've got a 300-pound rated uh, accessory hitch on the back, and notice the little bit of foam sticking out of that underbelly enclosure. I know it doesn't look pretty, but it also indicates that they are trying to do more work to seal the underbelly away from little gaps, away from critters, to help prevent this thing from becoming a mouse house, which it otherwise very easily could be. And if you climb up that 200 pound, 200 pound, 250 pound ladder, there, there I go combining words again unintentionally. That's how most of my nerdisms begin, actually. Um, first of all, it actually includes a ladder, which is cool. Normally up top on any Cougar, you would find uh, 220 watts of factory solar. It would have a, uh, a uh, no, actually, they always have 30 amp charge controllers. Now they bulk that up. Um, when you get the Midnight Edition, you automatically also get their 440 Solar Flex package, which includes a second to 120 watt panel, so 440 watts total. Again, you're gaining with the Midnight Edition the uh, 200 amp hours of lithium batteries. The 440 Solar package includes that 2000 watt inverter. There's also another roof prep plug up top and prep for another inverter dedicated strictly to the main air conditioner and uh, a, a prep for a second charge controller. So if you want to get a reasonable factory solar package that you build up on this is one that's done a lot of the prep work for you so that you can do that and again the 440 solar package you can get that with or without the midnight edition but remember midnight edition is where those lithium batteries come from the factory and again you've got a couple different exterior looks on this one whether you like the standard sort of light cream exterior the vanilla cream or the the black or the gray leave me comments let me know how would you want one of these equipped? You know, would you want a standard edition, midnight edition? What kind of dining situation would you want? Like, if you were going to get one of these today, how would you build it? Now, to help you kind of understand the differences between them, especially when it comes to cost vectors, I'll leave you some links in the video description so you can check pricing and availability on real stock in, uh, in you know, Anytime you're ready, whether you watch this video right now or a year from now, that will always be the best way to get you the most current and accurate pricing. And if you appreciate little efforts like that, hit that subscribe button, like our video, and until next time, everybody, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.